Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Mohammad Vaz Gil, and today I am going to critically appraise an article under the kind supervision of Professor Dr. Zaira Afzal. The title of the article is Prevalence and Disability Adjusted Life Years Rates of Asthma in China, finding from the GBD study 2019 of the G20. I will use the gather checklist for this appraisal that is the guidelines for accurate and transparent health estimates reporting here is the overview of the gather checklist this checklist is for the information that should be included in the new reports of the global health estimates it has total 18 points and i will uh, use all these points in my in my critical appraisal now coming towards the abstract of the article the background of this article is that the credible materials about the burden of asthma in China when compared to the other countries in the group of 20 remain unavailable. G20 means there are 20 countries in this G20. Uh, and the objectives and design of this study is that following the popular analysis strategy used in the global burden of disease study, the ASX country specific prevalence and disability adjusted life years of asthma in China were analyzed. Meanwhile, the comparison in the trends between China and other countries in the G20, there are 20 countries, were also evaluated. The results of this study is that in 2019, asthma was the eighth leading cause of Delhi's burden of 369 diseases in China. From 1990 to 2019, the age standard prevalence and daily rates of asthma in China decreased by 15% and 51% respectively. Whether the decline of the daily was much higher than the global average, it is worth noticing that the overall population is and desired daily rate of the asthma in China was lowest in G20 during 2019. More throughout the study, subjects in the 5 to 9 years of early interval has a constant focus of our attention. Conclusion The disease burden of asthma was varied greatly by gender and age over the past 30 years in contrast to the increasing burden in most other G20 country, the A standardized prevalence rate of asthma shows a significant decrease in trend in China, where the standardized daily rate shows a fluctuating change and has been shown a rebound trend in recent years. I will describe here that what does daily mean. Daily means daily adjusted life years. It is a summation of years of life lost due to disability and the years lived with disability. So it is a sum of two variables. In the title and abstract, the title has identified that it is a global burden of disease and the abstract has provided a structured summary with the background objectives and design results and the conclusions. Now coming towards the background, asthma has been recognized as a significant public health concern since 1970s, endangering the lives of and health of the people around the world in long term. In 2019, approximately 262 million people worldwide were affected by asthma about 460,000 people lost their lives. This negative effect is reported to be the most common in children and young adults, mainly due to the fact that one in the three individuals develop asthma. Additionally, in 2019, asthma ranked 8th out of the 369 disease and injuries affecting those aged 20 and younger as measured by the daily. Asthma can be a sizable economic burden to the countries and regions around the world. The group of 20 is an international economic cooperation forum composed of developed and developing countries. Similar to the other people in other countries around the world, the burden of health of the people of these G20 countries are intrinsically connected to their specific economic environments. However, no recent study has reported on the G20 epidemiology of the asthma alone, nor has been illustrated using the latest global burden of disease study. The most research, uh, recent research on the status and trends of G20 in GBD20 society helps to provide direction for the development of the clinical care guidelines and public health efforts. In addition, it aids a policymaker to allocate healthcare resources. The objective of this study is that it aims to report the prevalence and disability adjusted life years of asthma in China and to compare these rates to other G20 countries from the period of 1990 to 2019 while utilizing data from the GBD29 study. Now according to the checklist, I have to see whether it has defined the indicators population such as age, sex, demographic and titles and time period for which estimates were made. Yes, it has uh, defined the indicators 
that it is going to uh, uh, to estimate the prevalence of asthma and the daily due to asthma mm -hmm. the population will be uh, it has not described in it in this section but in later on it has described the ages uh, that it is going to collect the data from 0 to over 95 years of age and it has included both the both the genders and it has also described their geographical locations that it is uh, that the data will be collected for other china and then it will be compared to the other g20 countries and it has also specified a time period that is from 1990 to 2019 list the funding source of the further work yes uh, in the later section of this article it has described the its funding source that is national national natural science foundation of china Next, coming towards the methodology data sources. A detailed epidemiological description of the OU and definition of the GBD 2019 project can be found in GBD 29 disease and in G's collaborations. For the GBD 2019 study, a basin meta regression tool was used as a primary method of estimation for disease burden. Further, by using this tool, it was ensured that prevalence dailies due to asthma and the uncertainty intervals were all gathered from the GBD data source. Moreover, all GBD asthma data in this study were obtained from the Global Burden of Disease Collaborative Network and were filtered by the control criteria, that is International Classification of Disease 9th Revision and 10th Revision and were used to represent asthma as well as inclusion of four sequelae, that is the severity of the uh, severities of the asthma. The GBD estimation process is based on identifying multiple relevant data sources for each disease or injury, including census, household surveys, service uh, registrations, disease notification, and other resources. Each of these type of data are identified from a systematic review of the published studies. Now the measures of burden. As I have already, already described, what did uh, what does they mean by daily? That is disability uh, adjusted life year. That is the sum of the years lived with disability and years of life lost due to disability. Both uh, years lived with disability and years of life loss were evaluated for each age interval, sex group, and country in a particular region. As I I I I already have described this term, all measurements reported were the raw values rates per thousand. Per 100,000 and A standardized rates per 100,000 as compiled from the WHO standard A standard A structure of the world population. In order to calculate the A standardized rate, which is standard to the specific year population in terms of both prevalence and delays, we must first calculate the A specific rate for the each age group in a selected data set. So, coming towards the checklist, for all data inputs from multiple sources that are synthesized as a part of the study. Yes, that's, they have, uh, yes, they have de described their data inputs, that is uh, GBD uh, collaborative network. They have uh, uh, get their data from the GBD uh, collaborative network. And then the next point is to describe how the data were identified and how the data were assessed. Yes, they have de described that uh, the data were uh, uh, taken from the GBD collaborative network. And then they have de de decided, uh, then they have described the data, the data were collected on the basis of, of the international classification of disease 9th revision and 10th revision for, and for the asthma severity but they have does not uh, mention anywhere in the article the inclusion and exclusion criteria and uh, nor they have described the uh, ad hoc exclusions next uh, in next point of the checklist is that they have to provide information on all included data sources and their main characters for each data source, use report, reference, information, or contact name, institution, population, registration, data collection, data collection method, year of data collection, sex and age, diagnostic criteria, measurement method, and sample size uh, as relevant. Yes, they have described all these uh, uh, character tricks that the information that they have taken from um, the GPT collaborative network and all these uh, uh, characters they have described in the article. Next thing, they, they have to identify and describe any categories of input data that have potentially imported biases. They have not addressed the bias of any input data elsewhere, anywhere or elsewhere in the article. 
The next point is that for data inputs that contribute to the analysis but were not sent as part of the body. They have not described and give resources for any data uh, other than the inputs. And the next point is that for all data inputs, provide all data inputs in a file format from which data can be effectively extracted. For example, a spreadsheet other than the PDF, include all the relevant meta uh, data listed in the tip in the item five. Yes, they have uh, given a link at the end of this article from which all the input data can be uh, can be taken. And for any data input that cannot be shared because of the ethical such as a third party ownership provider contact name or the name of institution that retains the right to the data. Uh, this is not applicable to the uh, to this particular study. So it has uh, uh, not been addressed in this study. Next is the statistical analysis. The quantity of the prevalence and delays in our analysis mainly covers the number, rate and percentage. Moreover, the prevalence and daily rates were shown in the May rate and 95% uncertainty intervals. In this stage, the uncertainty is estimated by running the each model, by running each model until convoyed, then taking the 95th, 95th and 25th order sample from the 1000 posterior models as the 95% uncertainty interval of the estimate for each point certainty. Data were analyzed and graphical plots were uh, produced employed Microsoft Office Excel 2022. Moreover, they made a detailed comparison of the A standardized prevalence and daily rate uh, of asthma among the G20 countries. Uncertainty interval was used to compare the prevalence and daily rates by country and gender. Differences were considered statistically significant at the alpha level of 0.05 if the 95% uncertainty intervals of the estimate did not overlap. So, secondly, present study aimed to assess uh, the prevalence and daily rates of the clinical diagnosis asthma patients according to the age and sex in the China between 1990 and, uh, 1990 and 2019. In regard to the GBD study uh, data management analysis, the subject tested were divided into the following 20 categories, starting from the one year of age and 95 plus. Additionally, by the decomposition of analysis, they were able to initially explore the potential factors affecting the G20 asthma, such as the population size, age, gender, structure, epidemiological changes, and even severity of the asthma. So coming towards the checklist, the nine point is of the, the, uh, of the checklist that they have to provide a conceptual overview of the data analysis method. They have given the, uh, the, uh, the concept of the data analysis that they hope they will analyze the data but they have not uh, listed it with the help of a diagram. The next point is that they have to provide a detailed description of all the steps of analysis, including mathematical formula. Yes, they have described it uh, as far as the A standardized data has been concerned. Then they have to describe uh, th this description should cover as relevant data cleaning, data pre-processing, data adjustment and wait, uh, and weighting of the data source and mathematical statistical methods. Yes, they have addressed it. And then they have to describe how candidate models were evaluated and how the final model was selected. They have not addressed uh, the candidate models or the final models. Let me explain that what are the candidate and final model. Candidate model is that that the researchers may think that they may be useful uh, in their data set. And the final model is that the uh, is that model that the researchers have adopted after uh, at the end. The next point is. Uh, that they have to address is that the provide the results of an evaluation of model performance if done as well as the results of any relevant sensitivity analysis they have not attempted this uh, point of the checklist the next point is to describe methods for calculating uncertainty of the estimates yes they have explained it uh, the, uh, the uncertainty intervals then they have to state which sources of uncertainty were and were not accounted for in the uncertainty analysis, but they have not addressed this point. The last part of the data analysis is that they have to state how analytical or statistical source code will be used to generate estimates can be assessed. They have no, uh, again, they have not addressed this point. Coming towards the results section of the study, I am go only going to briefly describe the results. Uh, in 2019, the prevalence cases of asthma were 24.77, that is 95% uncertainty interval. 
Further, Delhi is caused by the asthma for 1.41 million, where there is 95% uh, uh, uncertainty interval. Fortunately, death cases due to asthma were 24,750 and uh, 20,244 to 30,769, which is far lower than the 40,041 cases in 1990. Notably, the percentage of delays caused by the asthma was 0.3%, making asthma the eighth burden of 369 disease in China. They compared the age standardized prevalence and daily rates of asthma in China with the global average, as well as average of the other 42 members of the G20 countries. In 2019, the age standardized prevalence and daily rates in the study were far lower than the global average level. That is 1974.16 by 10 uh, by 100,000 um, to uh, 1530.16 to 2565.37 by 3415 per 100,000. This is their data spreadsheet where they have uh, where they have uh, given the details of the age standardized prevalence, dailies, and their changes in asthma. And the forty three members of the G twenty and the world average from nineteen ninety to twenty nineteen was given. The conclusion is that in twenty nineteen the age standardized dailies rate of the asthma ranks eighth among the three sixty nine disease in China. It is a concern that the A standard prevalence rate of the asthma shows a significant decrease in stand. However, the A standard daily rate of those uh, does show a fluctuating chain. More, it has been shown a rebound trend in recent years. These rates were statistically significant across gender groups and age intervals. Combined with the findings of this study, the intervention of the risk factors such as high BMI, smoking, and occupational uh, uh, asthmogenics will be our next step for the formulation of the preventive measures and treatment action in order to reduce the burden of asthma. They have also given the uh, limitations. They have stated that the results of this study is not fully satisfactory. The reason is that the model, was used, the model that they have used was used in order to estimate the prevalence of daily rates of asthma by age, sex, year, and country. Whether there may be there, there may be differences from the criteria of the past studies leading to the discrepancy in the study in the data collected. At the same time, the lack uh, the lack of the relevant data in China in regard to the research methods will lead to the inability to obtain detailed research results. Second, the DBD studies lack lack the use of human biochemical indicators in order to further estimate the burden of different age and gender population, which may result in underestimation of the bias present within the different groups. So coming towards the checklist, in the results and discussion section, they have provided the published estimates in a file format from which the data can be efficiently extracted. As I have uh, shown it in this slide. The next point is that they have reported a quantitative measure of the uncertainty of the estimates. Yes, they have described it. And then they have interpreted the results in the light of existing evidence. They have interpreted the results uh, say, uh, with the other studies in the discussion and they have discussed the limitations of their estimates and they have also included a discussion of any uh, modeling assumptions or data limitations that affect the interpretation of the estimates. So the overall stance and limitation of this study is that they uh, have defined the indicator populations and the time period for which the estimates were made. They have described how data were identified and the whole data were assessed. Mention the funding sources, provide published estimates in a file format from that which the data can be efficiently extracted. They have interpreted their, their results uh, with the other studies. They have discussed the limitation of the estimates. However, the weak point is that they have not given the inclusion and exclusion criteria from which the uh, from which their input data was uh, taken. So this is the our YouTube channel where all the presentation of the postgraduate residents uh, are present here. And thank you very much for today's presentation. Thank you.